here are more sheep that I'm just going to approach. I don't know the behavior of sheep, but I feel like they will not attack me if I get close. Here guys, desert. these are desert sheep. So in case you wanted to know what desert sheep are like, this is what they're like. They have brown bums, apparently. And they're just eating the f*** out of everything. I see poopies hanging out from their butt. Look at them just grazing away. I believe these, I, I, yeah, I'm just going to guess, I'm just going to speculate here, but I believe these sheep are part of the poverty alleviation programs. This is giving, you know, opportunities for, look at that baby sheep, so cute. Oh my god, that little baby sheep. That little baby sheep is so cute. I just want to steal him. I want to steal that sheep. I want to steal, oh, he's running away. Like, he knows, he knows he's adorable. He's running away from me. He knows he's cute. Or she. Here's desert sheep. What up, guys? Guys, welcome to the Maowusu Desert. What well, used to be a desert. You can see these beautiful desert plants here. Now it's become quite a lot greener after a lot of cool efforts. And we're climbing a little dune here. Well, but you're not. I am. I'm doing all the hard work. All you're doing is clicking a f***ing button. So I'm climbing a dune, not you. And just want to give you a view of this whole area. That's why I'm climbing it, not just to be cool. Wow, that's nice. Look at that. So there you go, guys. That used to be pure desert. And I know that because the taxi, the driver I'm, I'm, uh, I hired for a few hours just told me that he grew up here and this was all desert when he was young. But it is still a desert. I mean, it's pure sand under my feet. So there's no, there's no denying that. But who knows, maybe in 20 years, um, right? Who, who knows? It might turn back into a forest. There's my lovely driver right there. Seems like a nice guy. I bargained with him for the price, 180, to take me here and then to another area. Okay, so I think we're, we're finding one of these tree lines that they planted. I'm not sure if it's a tree farm or... But there's supposed to be a great wall, a great green wall, um, somewhere in the north of China. So this might be part of it. Are more walls because walls are very popular here. There's a lot more industry up here, I noticed, or at least in these smaller towns. I'm gonna go to Jingbian today and hopefully heading over to Inner Mongolia in a few days. And this guy is cleaning the floors, which is really cool. Um, like I said, the floor looks pretty scary, but he's got a mop. Look at all these factories. I, I did a little research while I was here. I didn't do any research before I'm here, because that's how I travel. I don't have time to do research before I, tra before I travel. So I literally just pick a place, go there, and when I get there, I, I open up my phone and I start to do some research to find out what the history is, what the economy is all about. And it's said that they did have, uh, there, there are coal mines around Yingchen, so there's a lot of industry around, around that, like chemical processing and things like that, thermal energy. So these might be thermal energy plants. Again, I'm not too sure, I'm not an expert on it, but that is the little bit of research that I did in the hotel lobby one day when I was waiting for uh, booking a, a trip or something like that. So if you're wondering how I do travel so much and how do I, how do I plan all these trips, it's because I basically just pick places, I go, 
and I depend on the hotel or local people just to tell me where I should go. Look at these plants here. So right here what you're seeing is the main reason why northerners like to eat noodles or do eat noodles and why southerners eat rice because there's not that much water up here so they're, they all grow wheat. So wheat can be used for noodles and then in the south tons of water they can flood their plains, their rice fields and make rice. So there you go, it's just geography. Geography shapes so much of our life. Yes, I'm being Captain Obvious, but uh, just got to do that. <laughs> Sorry for the terrible narration. It's uh, 7 a.m. And um, I'm losing my I've noticed I'm losing my English. Like, I'm trying to learn Chinese, so... And then I teach kids English. I'm not using very complicated English every day. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm, like, losing... Um, I don't know if I can say fluency, but just a really, really... I, see, I, I can't even describe what I mean right now. That's the problem. It's hard for me to describe what I what, what I want to say using English these days, because I'm not in in an in English environment. I'm not speaking English every day at that level. I'm speaking English at a very basic level every day. Um, yeah, just a random rant as you check out the countryside of Ningxia. But we're crossing provinces right now, so we're going to go through, I think, Gansu into Shanxi. So basically, just northern China. Just so just south of Inner Mongolia. That's where we are right now. But man, the farmland looks really nice. <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of Canada, just the super flat land. And it's all fine. I think that's corn, I don't know. Is that corn, guys? You tell me, I have no idea what that is. What crop is that? Uh, when I went to the museum, they said that the Mongolians set up a really good farming system. And uh, so I think, yeah, they're the ones who really organized the farming system here about 700 years ago, 800 years ago.